Okay, so in this tutorial video, I would like to demonstrate how you can calibrate your images, uh, clean up the data, and achieve optimal results. So uh, Tycho really likes to identify moving objects, and uh, the issue here is that artifacts that were originally stationary, such as defective columns and hot pixels, well, they all of a sudden appear to be moving objects when you align the images. So this results in a number of false detections and that's really something we want to avoid if possible. So uh, what we really want to do then is eliminate the hot pixels, the defective columns, and a lot of people achieve that. Uh, they have uh, dark frames, they have flat frames, and, and some people also do uh, dithering. So dithering is where uh, you move the sensor in a sort of random fashion and obviously that's very helpful but in this video I'm going to talk about how you can mitigate these artifacts uh, using software approach so it, it does work better if you have a dark frame or a set of dark frames but Tycho also has a way to mitigate them even if you do not so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're dealing with here okay so these are 25 light frames that were captured uh, there are two minutes in exposure and these are the results that came back when we ran the tracker on, on this data set. So as you can see here the first set of tracks are just false detections. So the, the tracker thinks that this is a moving object and it thinks that this defective column here is a moving object. In other words it's identifying a consistent motion in the pixel data uh, from one frame to the next. And it's not until track number nine that it identifies the, the first asteroid. So clearly this is a suboptimal result. We would instead prefer to identify that asteroid as track number one. Now the truth is uh, this is actually the only known asteroid in this field of view. So as you see here, when you load up the MPC orbital database, this is the only object returned. So at least Tycho was able to find it and so that's great, but we could probably do better. So we want to go ahead and remove the defective column and also all the hot pixels. Uh, you can see them here. When, when the images are aligned, uh, they can produce um, this kind of behavior. So getting rid of the hot pixels is certainly something that should be done. And so if we look at just uh, a single frame, a single light frame for example. Uh, we can also look at it in the 3D viewer and this gives you a way to uh, see the hot pixels in another perspective. So it's kind of a neat way to do it. And here's the defective column as well. So if I turn off the crosshairs you can see it better. So okay we, we know that we need to clean up the data. So the first thing we want to do uh, is go ahead and get rid of the defective column. So Let's go ahead and take a look at the raw frames. And so I'll go ahead and clear the list here. So as I go here, these are the actual raw frames. Um, the others had a flat frame applied, but nothing else. So here we have an absolute raw frame, as you can see the gradient and so forth. So what we want to do is identify the x coordinates of the defective column. So defective columns, they are always at the same position. So if we just go ahead and make note of where they are, it saves time in processing. So 2215. So if we go to calibrate images, and we now have a setting here where we can say remove defective columns, and we type in the X coordinate of the defective column. So for example, if I didn't have that there, I could say, okay, 2215 because that is the pixel coordinate of the column, and I add it, and now it's in that list. So uh, it will now be removed when I perform calibration. Now hot pixels, so we, what we want to do there with hot pixels is ideally work with a dark frame, a dark master actually. So uh, we take a set of dark images, so we have them here. They're the same exposure duration as the light frames. Um, but again, 
dot frames by themselves did not always fully suppress hot pixels just because there can also be thermal differences uh, between the time that they were taken and the time that the light frames were taken. So you never want to use just a single dark frame by itself. The reason for that is that it has a lot of random noise associated with it. So instead you want to create a composite, uh, in other words, a dark master. So what we can do here is select all uh, of the frames and you'll notice we now have a uh, composite frame that we can then save. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as the master dark and once we have that, we can then proceed to work with it in the image viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and clear these out and add in the master dark. So if we load that up, we can then get an idea for uh, the calibration of the hot pixels. So this gives us a preview and as to what results we can expect to see. So I can also load up the 3D viewer here as well. So Without any calibration, you can see all the hot pixels there uh, that are present in the frame. And so what we can do is go ahead and click update. And as you see, they now are uh, largely uh, removed. So there is one parameter here, it's called target coefficient. So this is a percentage. So if I type in 5%, you can see we're not very aggressive and there are consequently still a lot of hot pixels. So we go to 10%, then we cut down more, 20%, and so forth. So I usually like to go with 30%, maybe up to 40%. Uh, if you put in too high of a number, then you start to lose actual image data. So we can kind of start to see perhaps um, uh, the, the result of having done that. So if I, if I do 90%, especially, it's kind of deceiving here because uh, it's actually substituting the background level for that hot pixel. So you, you don't really see it exactly, but yeah, these are certainly far too high up uh, in, uh, in percent. So consequently, yeah, you definitely don't want to use certainly more, no more than 40%, I would say. Basically, rule of thumb would be more or less to, to go ahead and use the lowest value you can that gets rid of the actual hot pixels. So 20% was actually not terribly bad, but maybe you still have some hot pixels. So that's why I say let's do 30%. Okay, so now you've identified a percent that works for you, then it's time to do the actual calibration. Okay, so we want to go ahead and calibrate the data. So we load up the light frames and we go to action, calibrate images. Now, normally when I do this, I actually do it as part of express mode, which allows you to perform calibration, alignment, and the other steps all in one pass. So that's quicker, but for this tutorial video, I'm going to do it separately. So calibrate images. And as you see, we want to remove out the defective columns. Again, that was specified here where we identified the X coordinate of the defective column. We also want to remove hot pixels. So again, I'm using 30% as the target coefficient. And we do have a dark frame available. That is the one that we just generated earlier. And again, Tycho can actually remove the hot pixels and so forth without uh, the master dark so it does have that ability however it is generally better if you do supply a dark frame for it to work with so we have that available and finally we're going to use pseudo flat so i click ok and as you can see it's off to process the data uh, by applying image calibration so we'll go ahead and give it a moment there to uh, finish that up Okay, so at this point I have cleaned up the data, calibrated out the artifacts, and rerun the tracker. So as you can see, the results here are much improved over what we had before. In fact, the very first track is that of our asteroid. And so even though we still have 5,000 detections, that does not matter. What does matter is that the tracker is now able to competently rank true detections above false detections. And that's 
with the fact that we have assisted it and cleaned up the data, it's now able to perform more optimally in that respect. So it's simply doing what we asked it to do. I set a very sensitive threshold for detection, and that's why we have so many results returned. But uh, the key thing here is that it does rank the true detection before the other detections. So hopefully this gives you an idea as to what you can do to improve your results. So thanks for watching and see you next time.